Hey everyone, this is a video that many of our high school students are asking. This is about methods on how to factor a quadratic trinomial. In this lesson, I'm going to show you four ways in order to factor a quadratic trinomial, and we are going to use this one problem to demonstrate these four methods. So let's begin with the first method. Let's call the first method as AC plus grouping. I do not know exactly what is the name of this, but some teachers call this as AC plus grouping method. So this is how the method works. First, we are going to identify A, B, and C. So our A is this 6, our B is this 7, and our C is this negative 10. Then we need to multiply A times C. So 6 times negative 10 is negative 60, and we form this X. Then we put this negative 60 here, and this B, which is equal to 7, here. Now, let's find factors of negative 60. You don't have to exhaust all the factors, but you need to find those factors such that when you multiply, the result is negative 60, and when you add, the result is positive 7. Now, since this is negative, we know that one of the factors must be negative, the other is positive. Which among these combinations will result to positive 7 when added. Of course, there are other more factors here. Notice that if one of these factors is negative, if I add, let's say, 60 plus negative 1, that is nowhere near positive 7. But notice that if this is negative 5 and positive 12, negative 5 times 12 is equal to negative 60, and negative 5 plus 12 is equal to 7. And so that is the combination that we want. It doesn't matter whether you write 12 or negative 5 first. Anyway, multiplication is commutative. Now, once you identify this 12 and this negative 5, you go back to the original problem, 6x squared plus 7x minus 10. Then, you are going to split this middle term, 7x, into this one, 12x and minus 5x. So this 12 is now this 12, this negative 5 is now this minus 5. So we are done with the AC part we are now going to proceed to factoring by grouping. So we're going to group these two together and group the remaining two addends together. But be careful when you have a negative sign. So for the first group, there's no problem because six is preceded by plus sign. When you have a minus sign here, if you put the minus sign here and you put a grouping symbol, you are going to change the sign of each of the terms. So this minus sign is now this minus, then you now have here positive five X, so, Put now the negative sign here, then change the sign of negative 5x to positive 5x, and change the sign of minus 10 to plus 10. You can always distribute to check if your sign is correct. For example, if you have here negative 1 times positive 5x, that is negative 5x, negative 1 times positive 10, that is negative 10. Now, after we did the grouping, Let's look for the common factors. There's a common factor of 6 between 6 and 12. There's a common factor of x between x squared and x. So let's factor out that 6x. Then divide 6x squared divided by 6x is x. 12x divided by 6x is 2. Copy the plus sign. Here, the common factor is 5. So 5x divided by 5 is x. 10 divided by 5 is 2. If you distribute the negative sign, you will still get negative 5x minus 10. Then, notice that x plus 2, this x plus 2 here, are common again. So we can factor out x plus 2 again, and then this part here, 6x times the quantity x plus 2 divided by x plus 2, the x plus 2 and the x plus 2 are cancelled, so what's left is 6x. Then this part here, 5 times the quantity x plus 2 divided by x plus 2, Again, the x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1, so what's left is minus 5. Since there's nothing more that we can factor out, then this is already the factored form of the quadratic 6x squared plus 7x minus 10 factored using our method 1. So in method 1, we find the product of a times c, and we identify the b. We find possible factors of negative 60, so that when multiplied, the result is negative 60. When added, the result is positive 7. And once you have those two numbers, you split the middle term into here, 12x 
minus 5x and then proceed to factoring by grouping. Now let's check if our answer is correct. To check, you just have to perform the FOIL method. So the first times the first is 6x squared. The outer times the outer is negative 5x. The inner times the inner is positive 12x. And the last times the last is minus 10. Minus 5x plus 12x is plus 7x. Copy all the rest. And we went back to the original equation. That means these two factors are indeed the factors of 6x squared plus 7x minus 10. So that is the first method. Let's proceed to the second method. In the second method, it's similar to the first method, but there's just some modification when we are in that part where we are going to find the factors. So again, let's identify the a, b, and the c, identify the a, c, and then find all the possible factors, and identify those two factors when multiplied equals a, c, when added equals b. So this part is exactly the same as in the first method. What makes the second method different is this is more of a technique rather than a correct equation resulting from the first equation. What do I mean? In here, I will begin by copying whatever is the coefficient, that is 6, and factor x squared as x times x. You might be complaining, 6x times 6x is not equal to 6x squared. That's why I said you cannot even put an equality sign here that this is equal to the previous one. This is just a technique. So after doing that, go back to this 12 and this negative 5. So put here plus 12 and minus 5. And then since 6 times 6 is not equal to the 6x squared, we know that this is not the correct first terms. What we're going to do is find the common factor if there is a common factor. Notice that between 6 and 12, there's a common factor of 6. So we divide both the first and the second term of this first factor by 6. Divide by 6 and divide by 6. Here, there's no common factor, so I'll just ignore that. Now, 6x divided by 6 is x, and 12 divided by 6 is 2, and copy the second factor. And this is now the final answer. This is the reason why this is a lazy method, because we do not use the factoring by grouping anymore. We just use some techniques to be able to identify what are the factors. So from here, going to here, they are equal, but from the given going to this intermediary step, we cannot put an equality sign unless you divide by the common factor. But once divided by the common factor, then the streets are all equal. Now let's go to the third method. In the third method, we are going to use what we call as the slide and divide. What makes this problem a little difficult is because our A is six. If this is one, there's no need for all these different methods. It's easier to factor when the coefficient of the x squared term is 1. So what we are going to do is we are going to slide this here to make this negative 10 times 6, like this. Notice that I did not do anything with the middle term. Now since we slide this 6 to the c part, we are going to divide the resulting factors by 6 later on. So from here, what we are going to factor would now be this x squared plus 7x minus 60, not the original expression. And so let's go back to the same procedure. We identify AC. Our AC here would be 1 times 60, 1 times negative 60 or negative 60. Our B is again 7. Then identify factors of negative 60 that resulted to 7 when added, and those two factors are 12 and negative 5. Then factor out now this expression. So factors of x squared are x times x. Factors of negative 60 are 12 and negative 5. But you know that this is not yet the answer because we slide the 6 to c. So to cancel out the effect of multiplying by 6, we divide by 6, this 12 and this negative 5 like this. And 12 divided by 6 is 2, so we have x plus 2 here. And when you cannot divide exactly 5 and 6 because the result is a decimal number, you just slide this 6 back to x like this, and so you have 6x minus 5. And again, this is now our final answer. So this method is slide and divide. The idea is it's harder to factor when the value of a is not 1, so we find a way to make the coefficient of x squared to be 1, but we don't want to mess up with the middle term, we just slide that value to c and then factor the resulting quadratic equation that is easier to factor because a is 1. And then once you find the factors, cancel out the effect of multiplying the c by whatever is that number by dividing by that number. So we divide this by 6, we divide this by 6. When 
the quotient is integer, then there's no problem. We just have x plus 2 here. But when the quotient is not an integer, then slide that divisor back to x. So it looks like 6x minus 5. And this is now the correct factors. Now let's proceed to the third method, which is the tic-tac-toe method. And the tic-tac-toe method, it's like we are playing the game tic-tac-toe. Find possible factors of 6x squared. Now, 6 could be 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. That's the problem here because it's trial and error. If the first combination that we selected, let's say 6x and x for the factors of 6x squared, when these two factors do not work, then we are going to try the other combination 2 times 3. So let's begin first with 6x and x and see if this works. Now, what are the possible factors of negative 10? It could be 2 and negative 5 or negative 5 times 2 or 1 times 10 or negative 1 times 10. So there are four possible combinations also and we are going to do trial and error until we arrive at the correct value for the b for the middle term by performing a tic-tac-toe method. So let's begin with this combination first. Multiply 6x by negative 5. The result is negative 30. x times 2. The result is 2x. When you add negative 30x plus 2x, the result is negative 20x, which is wrong. Now, when you arrive at the wrong answer, you are going to either change position of 2 and negative 5, or you are going to change the factors to, let's say, 1 times 10. That's why we call this as tic-tac-toe. Let's change position first of negative 5 and positive 2, and try again. 6x times 2 is 12x. x times negative 5 is negative 5x. 12x minus 5x is 7x, which is correct. Now, notice that we arrive at the correct answer by just swapping the position of negative 5 and 2, as if you are playing tic-tac-toe. And once you arrive at the correct value for b, after doing this cross multiplication, then the factors are 6x minus 5 and x plus 2. And this is now the answer. So this is the fourth method. So whatever method you use, you will arrive at the same result. But there is one more thing that I would like to emphasize. There are instances when there are common factors like this. Two is common among these three terms. When there is a common factor, don't perform any of the steps first before factoring out the common factor, especially if you're going to use the second and the third method because you will arrive at a wrong answer. So the correct step here is to factor out first the common factor two and factor the trinomial x squared plus 10x plus 6 using any of those methods. So if we're going to use the first method, again, we create this cross. Our a times c is 1 times 16, so it's 16. Our b is 10. Find possible factors of 16 that can result to 10 when added, and that combination is 2 times 8. So 2 times 8. Then we now proceed to factoring. So we copy 2, and we copy the x squared, and we split 10x as plus 2x plus 8x, and that will result to 10x. Then perform factoring by grouping. The common factor here is x, the common factor here is 8. Then the result has another common factor, x plus 2, so factor that out. And this part here divided by x plus 2, the quotient is x. This part here divided by x plus 2, the quotient is 8. There's no need for this grouping symbol anymore, so let's remove it to get the final answer 2 times the quantity x plus 2 times the quantity x plus 8. So this is the case when there is a common factor. Therefore, these are now the factors of our original given quadratic expression 2x squared plus 2x plus 32. Now, how does this look like if we are going to use method number 2? Using method number 2, this is what will happen. After identifying that 2 and 8 are those two numbers that we need, then we proceed to factoring this part here. The 2 is just copied here. Then since x squared is equal to x times x, and the factors of 16 that will result to 10 when added are 2 and 6, so we have here plus 2 plus 8, and you now have the answer. So this is now our answer. Now there's no need to use method number 3 because the coefficient of x is already 1. So there's no need to slide 1 anymore here because anyway it still results to the same one. So in here there's no need for the slide and divide method. Now for step number 4, now for method number 4 this is how we perform the tic-tac-toe method. We are going to perform the tic-tac-toe method only for this part inside the grouping symbol and let's prepare. So factors of x squared are x times x. Factors of 16 could be 1 times 16, 2 times 8, 
4 times 4, 8 times 2, 16 times 1. But we want those combinations that will result to 10 when added. And that combination is 2 times 8. So we put plus 2, plus 8, or plus 8. So we now write 8 and 2, or 2 times 8. It doesn't matter. We can always check. So x times 2 is 2x. x times 8 is 8x. And 2x plus 8x is 10x, which is correct. Therefore, for the factors of x squared plus 10x plus 16, we have the quantity x plus 8 times the quantity x plus 2, which is now this part. But don't forget that there is 2 that we factored out at the start. And this is now the answer. And so these are four different ways of factoring a quadratic trinomial, especially when the value of a is not equal to 1. If you have other questions or topic that you want us to discuss, feel free to send us a message or write that in our comment section.